And I see our next uh, presenter is up. And this is Jennifer Perry from Calgary. And Calgary is beautiful. I love it. <laughs> and you are a fourth grade teacher. And you're going to be talking about Coding Quest, teaching problem solving through coding. Yes. And Jen, just so we could do a shout out to your school that you teach at, what is the name of the school? My school is St. Marguerite. I'm sorry, St. Marguerite? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so it's exciting to be a part of this global initiative to showcase tech and innovation from around the world. And those were some pretty tough acts to follow. So I'll try to do my best. Um, like I, like you mentioned, I'll be talking about the Coding Quest and it's from a company, uh, a nonprofit company in Canada called the Learning Partnership. And so I began being interested in coding about four years ago. Every Friday, my class would participate in something called Genius Hour, where they would work on some kind of passion project that they were interested in of their choice. And a boy who was a reluctant learner introduced me to a game he was making on Scratch. This particular boy had very had done very little all year and he wasn't motivated to complete any of my assignments, yet here he was creating this amazing video game using Scratch. I witnessed him using higher level thinking skills, problem solving by seeking out answers, activating his growth mindset and being a creator. It was pretty amazing to watch as he was doing this all independently without my support as I knew absolutely nothing about scratch or coding. After that experience watching this boy in my class, I needed to learn more about coding and how I could use this in my classroom. So I began learning about scratch, which is an amazing tool for any teachers and, and parents as well. And once I discovered Scratch and coding, I really wanted to see if this form of digital literacy is something I should incorporate into my teaching practices. So I began teaching about 14 years ago, and I've actually seen the negative impact that technology has had on my students. Their literacy skills aren't quite as strong as they once were. They don't seem as attentive. Many of them have never actually experienced boredom until this very moment because their iPad is brought with them on long car trips. They just never have had an opportunity to be bored. So I'm not, I'm kind of leery about just incorporating technology without it being purposeful. So I think it's essential that we move away from our students being passive users of technology where they just consume and consume and consume to a place where they're in control of the technology and they're active users of it. So this is my goal as an educator. So I began reading educational articles about coding, finding resources, and it really wasn't hard to be convinced that coding is an essential skill that should be taught. Um, I was further convinced when I was reading a book that I think all educators and actually all people should read called Reader Come Home. It was a little shout out to it. And it's by Marianne Wolf, and it's about the reading brain in a digital world. So I started reading this book because I wanted to see how I could improve my student literacy skills. And when I was reading it, my intention wasn't to read it to do anything with coding. It was just to do with pure literacy skills. I found this quote from um, some people that work at MIT Media Lab, which is where Scratch is created. And it says, every child should be given the opportunity to learn how to code. Coding is often seen as difficult or exclusive but we see it as a new type of literacy, a skill that should be accessible for everyone. Coding helps learners to organize their thinking and express their ideas just as writing does. As young children code, they learn how to create and express themselves with the computer rather than just interact with software created by others. Children le learn to think sequentially, explore cause and effect, and develop design and problem solving skills. At the same time, they aren't just learning to code, they're coding to learn. So when I read that, it really changed, well, it validated, I guess, so many things. And I, I was on this mission to incorporate coding into my classroom. Um, from there, I went to so many different professional development sessions and I found resources. And it's pretty amazing all the free stuff out there. Google has a great free educator course, CS First, Scratch, uh, Microsoft Make Code. And in Canada, there's a plethora of free resources, including, I'm gonna give a big shout out to Canada Learning Code, 
which has so many educational resources for newbie teachers, experienced teachers, um, education related, so you get your curriculum in. And that's when I stumbled across the Learning Partnership and the Code Quest Challenge, which is something my class did this year. So the Code Quest challenges students in grades four to six to build their own educational video game using Scratch. And it must have some kind of curriculum outcome, something that we learned about this year. So it has to be educational and they work in groups. There's lesson plans along the way. You get a resource manager to come help you. Um, so you're not, if you don't have any coding experience, you can still do it. So this is a huge shout out to Canadian teachers who wanna try the Code Quest if you're a grade four to six um, teacher. And it ends with a Code Quest arcade where students showcase their games and deliver their elevator pitch to various people that are coming to check out their coding um, projects. And this Code Quest arcade takes place in over 15 places in Canada. So I thought I'd show you a little video, hopefully it works, of the actual arcade challenge. I think of it as like an old school science fair meets coding. So let me share my screen and I hope it works. Okay. <laughs> um, oh no, I'm not sure if it's gonna work. I can't see my, oh, here we go. Maybe this will work. We, we see your screen. Do you see the code quest now? We do. There you go. Make it a little oh, oh, I don't know if I clicked. Sorry, I'm gonna have to go back and click that. I I just want to make sure that I click the audio. There we go. Okay, this should work now. I'm not showcasing my tech skills, am I? Okay. Let's can you make see. can you expand the screen? Yeah. Okay. okay I'll just show you I've a little wanted, bit about it. I wanted to code my own video game, and I'm looking to you guys for inspiration. Some of you have been working very hard over the past few weeks to make video games from scratch, and so I'm going to check them out here at the Coding Quest Arcade! <laughs> this game called? It's called Thunder Maze. Whoa! What is the name of this game you created there? Um, Jumanji. This game is called Wizards and Warriors Wind Edition. We have the geniuses behind Road Collector. How do you play Road Collector? When they hover over the sprite. Hey, all right. You have to press that key. You have to try to find all the family members in the game. So it's like a maze. Yes. Yeah. So it's a combination of a maze, you avoid the obstacles, and there's a spelling challenge. Yeah. If I'm going to design a video game, I need some tips from the masters. So what is your number one tip for me? Definitely look at other games. You have to try to make it exciting. I'm about to win. I'm about to win. You should have intense music. Three, two, here we go. Here we go. Here we... I lost. <laughs> okay. You can so find this video on... Um... YouTube as well. Am I back now? You can see me? Oh, yeah, you're perfect. Okay, good. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna scroll down here for a sec. So you can see how much fun, um, obviously, that is. My students were super disappointed. We were just on the cusp of um, going to the arcade challenge, and with COVID, obviously, that didn't happen, but a lot of my students are still working on their projects. So I became obsessed with coding and I still am. And the impact I was seeing on my students, the Arcade Challenge provided that authentic opportunity to use their coding skills to create this game. My students worked in small groups and had to figure out how to cooperate, which is always a great skill when you're a teacher, manage their time, make lists of things that they needed to do. That was for many of them the first time they've ever had to make a to-do list. Problem solve, activate their growth mindset, as they failed and had to try again and again, and ultimately to be creative and innovative. They basically unleashed all 21st century competencies and became the active users of tech that they need to be. It's amazing to watch this process happen. Um, there is an energy in your classroom where kids are excited about what they're learning. And I know how impactful the Code Quest challenge was because as we shifted to remote learning, I wasn't getting emails about math or my language arts assignments. I was getting emails about coding projects and asking for some help with their coding projects. So many of them are still working on their projects um, or working on new projects in Scratch from skills that they learned through the CodeQuest Challenge. 
their projects aren't quite ready to be shared, otherwise they would have shared some of them, but there are some ideas that they are working on include an environmental game about ocean plastics, a knight's quest to conquer multiplication and division facts, and an adventure game about um, our local geography. So those are some ideas. I believe as teachers, we need to learn with our students. Teachers have to become learners. I am not a professional coder, but when you create an atmosphere of learning together and not being the keeper of all knowledge, you allow your students the, the independence to take control over their own learning. I am not able to answer all their coding questions, but together we seek answers and we learn from each other. Um, for the first time as educators, we don't actually know what jobs will exist for our students in the future. There'll be so many tech-based jobs that aren't even in existence right now. So how do I prepare my students for jobs that don't exist? Well, I have to prepare them with 21st century competency skills to be ready for whatever the future brings. And obviously right now, this is more important than ever. So I think that coding in the classroom and digital literacy skills enables my students to be future ready. So there's my own little presentation about coding. And if you're a Canadian teacher teaching grade four to six, I highly recommend you check out the Learning Partnership um, Code Quest Challenge, and they also have some other amazing, innovative programs. Uh, Jen, Jen, this that was incredible. You, you have no idea I, how happy I am to hear what you're doing. <laughs> um, for two, I'll tell you why, and you don't realize this, but there was a teacher earlier. You're, we're near the end of our 24 hours right now. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the beginning of our 24 hours, there was another teacher named Tim Hotchkiss. And he was talking about exactly the same thing. He started to work with some products. It was a company called Parallax. And in fact, the CEO will be the next presenter. You may want to stay and, and listen to him. But Tim was saying exactly the same thing. He said, I didn't know how to do this. And he said, I told my students I didn't know how to do this. And mm -hmm. I, I think your attitude is wonderful. Uh, so many times I've seen teachers who think, like you mentioned, that they have to know everything or they can't mm -hmm. teach the subject. And that's not true. You are, are a facilitator, and I'm sure your students are going to go off and do incredible things. And maybe they will come back and explain to you what they have done. Yeah. Can the students as teachers, I love that when my students become the teacher in our class. It's one of my favorite things. Jen, I would also just like to thank you so much. I do a lot of work in Alberta and Nova Scotia awesome. and Vancouver, and I'm texting with some Canadian teachers right now who were just thrilled to watch you. And oh. they love the whole idea of the Coding Quest Arcade. Um, and so they may be reaching out to you if that's okay. Yes, and yes, please send my info their way. Partnerships. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for putting on this amazing event. Okay. Thank you. No, it's only amazing because you were part of it. <laughs> <laughs>